Lamborghini Huracan Performante was produced to compete directly with Ferrari's Speciali model. That was the then current Vergiani Speciali for Ferrari. Is the Lamborghini Huracan Performante a worthy adversary for the groundbreaking Ferrari 458 Speciali? Welcome to the Lamborghini Huracan Performante Spider, also known as the LP640-4, the 640 standing for the metric version of the brake horsepower, it's 631 brake horsepower which relates to 640 PS, the 4 stands for, well, four wheel drive. Now the standard Huracan was in production from 2014 to current year, the latest version of the Huracan is the Storato. The Performante was in production from 2017 to 2019 and this is a 29 edition of the Performante Spider. So what makes the Performante so special when compared to the Huracan? Well first of all it's a track edition of the Huracan so much like the Ferrari Speciali and the Ferrari Scuderia were track editions of their re respective models. The Lamborghini Performante is a track edition of the Huracan so it's lightened and more performance. For example the Performante broke the Nürburgring lap record in October 2016 where it beat the predecessor owner of that lap record which is the Porsche 918, it beat its lap record by 6 seconds. That's a massive difference by 6 seconds. How does it achieve that improvement? Well first of all it's substantially lightened, be a track edition it's substantially lightened. The standard Hurricane is 1551 kilograms and this is 1382 kilograms, that's 169 kilograms difference. So it's 169 kilograms weight loss, that's a massive weight loss. So how is that weight loss achieved? So I'll take you for a walk around the car and as I walk around the car I'll talk through the different approaches implemented to achieve that weight loss. So this 2019 Performante Spider has an exterior colour of blue Cepheus. I believe that's quite a rare colour. The interior is black Nero with blue Cepheus accented stitching. Now how does it achieve that 169 kilogram weight loss? Now this is achieved in many ways and all of them accumulate together to provide that full, full 169 kilogram weight loss. First of all, a lot of components have been created in forged carbon or as they call it forged composite. So the whole front splitter is forged carbon. Now moving around to the rear of the car, two things that denote a Performante are its rear wing and the tricolour side stripe. The whole rear wing is also in forged carbon and also the whole rear diffuser which is a substantial component on the Performante, all this rear diffuser is also in forged carbon. That's a substantial weight loss. The Lamborghini Performante implements what's called Active Aero and a new system was implemented for the Performante called Aerodynamica Lamborghini Ativa. This is the hydraulic system that manages the Active Aero and this provided an 80% weight loss when compared to the outgoing system that was implemented in the standard Hurricane. That again is a massive contribution to that 169 kilograms. We can see that the weight loss has been carried forward to the cabin. The climate control vents are all in forged carbon, the centre console is all in forged carbon and the whole interior of the car is upholstered in this beautiful black Alcantara with blue Cepheus offset stitching. In addition it has items such as lightweight mats and lightweight carpeting. So if you enjoyed the video so far, if you enjoy this format of content, please make sure you click the like button, very important for the channel, and also make sure that you're subscribed if you're not subscribed already. Now back to the video. This is the naturally aspirated Lamborghini V10, 5.2 litres, 631 brake horsepower, 442 pound-foot of torque and it will propel the Lamborghini Performante from 0 to 62 in 2.9 seconds with a maximum top speed for the Spider of 201 miles per hour. As you can see there's really not much to look at, predominantly you can see the air boxes which lead into the intake plenums but you can't see the intake plenums because of the folding roof mechanism so that's all you get to see really. 
Now, one more important thing before we take it out for a drive. This Performante Spider has been kindly provided to us to review by Watches of Bath. And this was organized by Five Zeros. And we're using the Five Zeros land area at the moment to film this video. So thank you very much to Watches of Bath and thank you very much to Five Zeros. Very, very much appreciated. So now we're going to take the Hurricane Performante out on the road and let's see how it performs. some interior ergonomics. Seating position is good but if you're taller than six foot one you're gonna have problems. My son is six foot two and his head is brushing against the roof. I suspect in the standard Performante Coupe you wouldn't have such a problem and also I suspect it's very very similar to the Spider Evo. I, I suspect it's very similar to the Evo Spider whereby you're constrained for leg room with regards to how far the seat will pull back because I'm six foot, I'm six foot one and all my height is in my legs. And yes, the seat is far enough back and I have got enough leg room, but if I was any taller, I'd have a problem because I've got the seat furthest back I can have it and there's no more room. And I feel like I'm quite upright because I can't tilt the seat any further back because the seat is far back against the, the rear bulkhead as, as, as far as it would go. So I think if you're tall, you'd have a problem in, in the spider versions of the Hurricane. The fit and finish of the interior is fantastic. You've got all Alcantara all round, so everything is upholstered in Alcantara, including the dash and the seats. Obviously, you've got the, the blue Cepheus accents on the seats, so that's very that really lifts the black of the cabin. You've got forged carbon all over the place, so you've got the climate controls, as I detailed earlier, all the, the vents are all in forged carbon, and you've got the center console is in forged carbon. Personally, I don't like forged carbon, but I think the, the normal standard carbon looks a lot better, but that's personal preference. The steering wheel, well, that's an interesting one. Much like the Ferraris, far too much functionality on the steering wheel. I think Schumacher's had a good old go on his steering wheel too. You've got the indicators with a left-hand slider button. That left-hand slider button, you have to slide it left to put the indicators off of the left-hand side and a little hold does a lane change, a long hold, latches it. Same for pushing it to the right. You've got a similar slider button or similar slider slot on the right hand side of the steering wheel. And you'd automatically think, okay, you can use that as well. So you use that for turning right. No, that switches the wipers on as I found out. So to use the indicators, you've got to use the slider button on the left and on the right. And to be able to cancel it, as I've just found out as well, because I couldn't find out how to switch it off, you have to press the button in. So you press the button in to cancel the indicators if it's latched, if it won't switch off automatically. So if you're doing a lane change but you've accidentally put it on a long indicator version, then you have to press the button in to switch it off. Uh, not very intuitive. And there's buttons all over the place with regards to the lights and everything else. And hopefully I won't have to use those because I've got no idea what they do. But there's loads of other buttons down the bottom. You've got Lamborghini's version of the Manatino at the bottom of the steering wheel. And that provides you Strada, Sport and Corsa modes. In effect, street, sport and race modes. And they change the dynamics um, of the engine. So they change the performance of the engine with, with different maps in the ECUs. I'm currently in sport mode, and sport mode provides um, very fast gear changes about what you'd expect is pretty much comparable with the 458. But I would say that the downshifts aren't very eventful. Yes, you get the program pops and crackles from the exhaust all the time on the downshifts, and the exhaust sounds absolutely awesome, far superior to any of the other cars, and I'd say probably it's a more of an event for sure than the 458. lively so it's, it's a fast steering rack from what I can tell so far but I'll provide more of an update on that later on but there's very little give in the steering so 
you move it just slightly and the, and the car wants to turn in. So that's good because you'd expect that from a track edition of the Hurricane. The dashboard layout, I'm not too sure about the functionality, how you switch to different screens. Again, you've got a plethora of switch gear on the center console. I haven't got a clue what half of that does. I mean, this isn't my car. You'd have to learn that. Or I'm sure if you know it, then you know it. It's got media system, um, all sorts of menu options, etc. with twisty knobs. <laughs> Don't know what it's for. You've got a climate control here. Now that's fairly straightforward. Left to go cold, right to go warmer. Auto control, that's all you need really from the climate control. So that's quite easy. Um, had a hell of a job to get the fuel cap open because it just wouldn't open up, just didn't know how you opened it. So you've got to have the car started to open the fuel cap and then it's a press against the fuel cap. You don't have a switch to open it up, but the car's got to be started. I wouldn't say that's very intuitive because when you put fuel in a car, the engine's got to be stopped, but go figure. Lamborghinis are very different to Ferraris. With Ferraris, when you start them off and you put them in gear, you've got no creep option. Whereas Lamborghinis, or this Hurricane Performante for, for sure, has this creep option. So you put it in gear and it starts to creep forward. Like now, I'm not touching the accelerator, but it's creeping forwards. And it does the same in reverse as well. So that was strange to begin with. Remember when we were on the Mod Ball Rally, we were following a Hurricane for quite a while when we were in the Scottish borders, when we were driving the Scottish borders. And I remember hearing the, the pops and crackles all the time on the downshifts with that car. And it was quite cool to begin with, but after about 40 minutes or an hour of it, it started wearing thin. So um, it's cool. I mean, don't get me wrong, the sound of this car is awesome. But I can see those pops and crackles um, waning on you a bit after a few hundred miles. Also, just talking about the roof a little bit, it's a it's a cloth tops um, it's a cloth top spider roof, which you know whether you like it or not, that's again personal preference. But you can constantly hear this like sound, air like sound across the roof, which may get annoying after a while. Again, that's just the characteristic of having a cloth, a cloth spider roof. You've got this, these quarter panels in the front A pillars, which I don't know if that was a necessity to have that, but with the sections that separate the quarter panels, that obviously blocks your visibility a bit, but in general, the visibility is good. Side visibility is fine. With regards to the B pillar visibility, forget it, you've got none. And you know, forget trying to twist your head round, you're gonna see nothing. All you're gonna see is the rear bulkhead and the rear seats. And rearward visibility through the rear and rearward visibility through the rearview mirror. Well, you can see okay, but you've got a whacking great big wing in the middle of the rearview mirror, so that's not great. The rearward visibility isn't isn't fantastic, but it's a Lamborghini Hurricane supercar. What do you expect? You know, it's supposed to be flamboyant. Let's just try it and see how it pulls in sport mode. So we just pop the roof down now so we can get some driving dynamics with the roof down at the end of the day. It is a Hurricane Performante Spider, so we've got to give you some feedback on what it feels like with the roof down. Instantly you can feel you're very open to the elements with the roof down here. I would say a lot more open to the elements than you are in the 458 and the F8 and the 488. Definitely there's a lot of wind noise and a lot of turbulence in the cabin as we push on. And the car, as you can feel, see from me jiggling around all over the place, the car is very planted but the suspension is very stiff. I wouldn't say that going by 
how much the car's moving around. I wouldn't say that that's great from the point of view of taking the car on a long journey. That would soon get really annoying, especially on some mountain passes. And the problem with the Lamborghini driving modes, and certainly with regards to the Hurricane driving modes, you can't disengage the suspension configuration from the driving maps. So if you put it from Strada into Sport, then you're stuck with probably stiffer suspension, even more, even stiffer suspension, and you haven't got what's called the bumpy road mode, which you have in the Ferraris. That is a brilliant configuration. That is a brilliant function of the Ferraris to have that bumpy road mode. So in effect, you can put it into a very performant engine mode and then disengage the suspension from being too stiff to make it more compliant if you're on a, a bumpy road section. Let's move into sport mode. Growl of the exhaust there. One thing I'd say you get with Lamborghinis, especially with this, with this Performante, you get the Lamborghini growl. <laughs> Lamborghini growl and the Lamborghini downshifts. time especially if you're on a long journey and those downshifts they're very programmed so there's pops and crackles they're always the same there's no separation um, so it must be programmed into the into the ECU Unless you're well within the, 
unless you're well within the band for that gear. So that's a, another safety mechanism it has too in sport mode. Which is a good protective mechanism to be honest, so it means you can't overtly stress the engine. I could see that this on a track would be great, exactly the setup you'd want on a track, but on a road I'd say it's too aggressive. I mean, it's belting us all over the bloody place here. It's very stiff. I know I keep saying that guys, but it's a major characteristic of this car. It's almost like the, the wheels lose traction a little bit where it jumps over and skits over these bumps because the suspension is so stiff. It doesn't soak them up, which means the wheels, instead of going into the little dips in the road, they're skitting over it, so you're losing a bit of traction. Now it's not bad, it's not aggressively bad, it's just something you've got to be aware of. Really what this car needs is a bumpy road mode. It is crying out for a, a, a disengagement of the suspension system from the driving mode setup, from the engine driving mode setup. Incredible looks. We get a lot of looks in this car. The blue Cepheus really attracts attention, both good and bad. Now, if you like, if you like to be attention grabbing, then this is the car for you. If you don't, then you ain't going to be any shrinking violet in this car. I can assure you. Looks fantastic. Sound awesome. Although that could get a bit wearing after a while because those those downshift popbacks are very programmed but the exhaust sounds absolutely awesome, especially in Corsa mode. It's a phenomenal sounding car, that 5.2 litre V10 is just an incredible engine. Traction is definitely good with the four wheel drive system, though you can feel it understeer a bit as you're getting into the corners. Downshifts are fantastic, upshifts in Corsa mode are very aggressive and they really kick you back in your seat. Downshifts and upshifts in Sport mode or Strada mode aren't so much of an event. Also this dynamic where it won't let you redline the car unless you're in Corsa mode. I personally prefer the Ferrari approach where you can redline it and bounce off the limiter. But, you know, that's just me. With regards to downshifts, I can understand that that's a good idea to prevent it from over revving, so that's a good protective mechanism. So now getting on to the negatives, okay? So the key thing, the key negative on this car which is part of the characteristic of it being very, very track focused, is the suspension setup. It is very, very harsh. Very, very stiff setup. And that's not a bad thing with it being a track focused car. You'd expect that if you put it into sport or race mode, coarser mode, that the suspension would get stiffer, which it does. But the problem is you can't disengage the suspension setup from the driving map. You've either got harsh suspension and performance or a bit more compliant in strata mode, in street mode. But even in street mode, it's not very compliant. This car is crying out for a bumpy road mode. But unfortunately, Lamborghini doesn't have that functionality. So that's, a, that's the biggest negative for me, is the brutality of the suspension setup, that there's no disengagement or there's no ability to disengage the suspension from the ECU driving mode setup. Personally, I don't like 
ramps off roofs. But again, that's personal preference, so I shouldn't really count that as a negative. <laughs> suspension than the standard Hurricane and than the Hurricane Evo. So we've just pulled up on the side of the road to give you a quick summation. First of all, let's loop back to the beginning of the video where I posed that question. Is the Lamborghini Huracan Performante a real adversary or worthy adversary for the 458 Speciale? Well, that's personal preference, really. In my opinion, no. Now, what a lot of people won't realize is that I did actually own a 458 Speciale for a short period of time, but maybe that's something for another video. We haven't covered that off yet. So I have got some experience of a 458 Speciale. Now, the key separation between a 458 Speciale and the Hurricane Performante is that you can dis disengage the suspension setup from the driving mode. So when you've got it in a more aggressive driving mode and the engine's set up to be more performant and more aggressive, you can soften the suspension with that bumpy road mode. Now, that is what this car is crying out for, in my opinion. In my opinion, for road use, the suspension setup is too aggressive. It really skits across bumps, and that's a bit unnerving. You have to really keep hold of the steering wheel. But with regards to track use, I can see definitely why this was very aggressive and, very, and performed very well on the Nürburgring, taking six seconds off the 918 Porsche of, the, of its previous lap record in October. 2016. So in summary you could say that the 458 Speciale is more of an all-rounder with an edge towards being more track focused whereas the Lamborghini Huracan Performante is more very very far forward to the right of being very track focused and not so much road focused. But again personal preference if you like to be banged around a lot when you're driving the car um, especially in Corsa mode then maybe this is the car for you but personally it's, it's not for me. Me personally, I prefer Ferrari, so I would always edge towards a 458 Speciale anyway, anyway, but that's my personal preference. Many thanks to Five Zeros and Watches the Bar for lending this, this car to review. Very, very much appreciated. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll catch you in the next video. Mm -hmm.